Yeah, <laughs> this is the closest that I am to cosplaying as Mac from Foster Home for Imaginary Friends. <laughs> yeah, from what you can tell, I just came back from watching If, the latest Imaginary Friend <laughs> movie that, that came out, well, yesterday at least. Wait a minute. Didn't we have another Imaginary Friend movie this year? Oh uh, yeah! It was the Blumhouse mo movie Ima uh, Imaginary. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that was garbage. It was still garbage now that I think about it. But yeah, we got... Uh, I've, I've been teasing that, especially during my Imaginary review. And here I am... Well, the day has come. Uh, this is one of those movies that I was anticipating out of a pretty curiosity for it. The movie If. Yep. If. As an imaginary friend. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, the movie does that, that too. So, uh, <laughs> I was kind of like anticipating this movie mostly out of curiosity. And, and there are also some, you know, little details of why I am anticipating it. First of all, the concept looked interesting, and I did kind of like some, some of the animation gigs that they had there, uh, you know, going, uh, and, and yeah, the, uh, judging by the trailer, the concept is very foster home for imaginary friends, <laughs> you know, remember that show? <laughs> uh, I did talk about it during my Christmas uh, season uh, once, I think it was two years ago. And I do it, and you know what? I did revisit that show, and there are some moments that it still holds up. <laughs> it's still kind of like a funny, uh, funny show. So I just wanted to see how much, well, inspiration they got. And the second reason is that, that the second reason that that this movie caught me is that, well, you got Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is kind of one of those likable, likable actors that uh, you watch it and you see that the guy has has a pat. He still one of the few uh, feel a little bit of passion that the industry has. He he loves doing the, you know his comedy bit. Uh, he's a good actor and all this stuff. And and well, also I need something because. Okay, funny thing is that last year, uh, last year a friend showed me this Christmas movie called Spirit, uh, the one with Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds, and I was kind of like, mm, not not buying too much the cynical nature until I was kind of like warming up a little bit, but then came that ending, and I, this is where everything went down. I freaking hated that ending so spirited automatically became one of my most hated uh, christmas movies i ever seen and i was just sad because Brian Reynolds was i was good with it and him and, and and god that i that spirited i hated i hated that ending i hated 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 that ending oh and speaking of hated funny thing is that this if movie it is a Paramount movie, which is technically uh, it technically kind of like a coincidence because I just I just came back from watching that Knuckles series and God it was awful. You, you know I made a vlog out of it, a very 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 angry vlog on it. You're welcome to check it out. Oh, and by the way, hashtag uh, get rid of James Marston. <laughs> uh, well, I, I shouldn't have said that when it was supposed to be one 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 no thing, but but okay, you brought me back. Uh, anyway, still, uh, still, I was anticipating for if, and and the day finally come, and I just and went to see it, and I can say that it was a pretty sad sight the way that uh, when I went to to see it, because. Mm -hmm. I was the only person in the movie theater. I don't know what happened. Even even on on you know some bad movies that I have seen or movies that doesn't get too much promotion, 
at least I could see like I could see like for example two or three more people there uh, not necessarily you know filling uh, filling the uh, the theater uh, out that uh, the last time it was Planet of the Apes and the Planet of the Apes uh, movie uh, from last week was it was actually uh, decently filled. This one, oh my God, it was it was sad. Just me alone. Nobody was there. Nobody. And it made me sad. And especially because I know that they were promoting this movie a lot. You know, IHOP is, is promoting it. And oh, uh, let me show you something. Uh, they also gave me this. They gave me this poster. <laughs> a limited edition poster or promoting the, the, the movie if it was and 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 I, now that i look at it uh, i did see a couple of them you know you know uh, uh there i was i was kind of sad i was it was a very 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 sad uh, it was i don't know it, it was uh, it made me feel bad for the movie industry, and I don't know, I don't know if, if it's the movie's fault because man, they 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 they're, they were trying their best to promote this movie, and you know what? It's really a shame because the movie was actually pretty good. It it I this is the movie was actually good and totally. It, it feels like it is uh, Ryan Reynolds asking me for forgiveness for for the shit ending of uh, 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 what was it of Spirit, and also it was kind of like Paramount saying sorry for Knuckles. I, 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 there, oh, yeah, this is one of those movies that. You can tell that there are flaws in there because it's not exactly kind of like a perfect movie. There are flaws, mostly in kind of in the in the pacing and logic department. But man, that th you can tell that this movie had the heart in the right place. Is it, it, it don't expect something like a comedy, 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 comedy shenanigans kind of kind of movie like fast like you know you expect from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Although there are some details that it really, it really feels familiar into that territory. Uh, but it has its own kind of like quote unquote lore to make it familiar yet different. And, and, and honestly, I'm kind of glad that it doesn't, doesn't treat your audience like idiots like, Knuck, like Knuckles did. It is a comedy, but it is a well done. It, it does kind of like well done comedy in the sense that they know where to hit it. But kind, of, but it also has kind of like a mixture of uh, a, a little bit of well, I don't want to say this, but it's kind of like a Hallmark story. Uh, it, it 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 has kind of like a. A, a kind of like a relatable story. Uh, I don't want to say you know even relatable because that's actually uh, well, uh, subjective. Uh, but it 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 has its charm. It has a charm that is well earned. And but, and I get it. And and I just came out with this movie, uh, making me feel good, especially since the movie is. It, the movie is kind of telling, you know, even in an adult perspective, that it's okay to have a moment where you feel like you have an imaginary friend. It, this is kind of like a pro-imaginary pro friend uh, kind of situation in which, in, in which I, I, can under, I can understand that. Uh, when there, it comes kind of, it, it's kind of like a, it kind of, it comes like a mixture of coming of a coming of age uh, movie uh, uh, alongside with uh, how can I say the, uh, uh, the the moments in which it tells kind of like uh, people that are growing up that it's okay to maintain your memories that you use as a child. It, it's more kind of like a incentive 
to imagine to imagination and and it, and it and it it doesn't technically force you or treat you like an idiot it doesn't hammer it into your head and 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 also this this is kind of like the kind of movie that it, it, it that we need at least once in a while in which it's not cynical in, in its own thing like spirited or something like that so so I very happy very happy with the movie that came out that came out so I think it is time for me to talk about it, you know, in detail. So, basically, the movie stars this uh, this girl named B B B. Uh, uh, B I say it's there, but they call it like B. Uh, she's played by Kaylee F Kaylee Fleming, and uh, she is uh, she is kind of like this imaginative artistic girl that. She loves her parents, and of course, because they wanted to play the Disney thing, she loses her mother, and recently she moved back, you know, to New York, to her her old old house where her grandmother lives. And it's not kind of like vaguely explained. I'm doing the best I can, uh, but it's mostly because she wants to be close to the hospital because her father, played by of course, uh, what was the name, John Krasinski, the father. He's in the hospital because he has, uh, well, to put it mildly, a broken heart. Yeah, he has. He he's gonna go through heart surgery, and and well, and well, B is technically taking. She loves her father, and his father is kind of like this goofy, goofy guy. He he loves to play around, acting sometimes acting, you know, like a child, but not in an in an annoying manner. Manner. Looking at you, Wade. And he just he's just kind of like playful. Out the out the beach, she is trying to trying to cope. You know her sadness that she's she's having. You know her father, hospi her father hospitalized by trying to act tough and, and trying to act tough. She uh, she doesn't she's not getting kind of you know artistically. She's not artistic anymore. She she say, says that. And she's she's kind of denying her nature that she's not a child, although she's twelve years old. Although coincidentally, uh, Kaylee Fleming, Kaylee Fleming as the actress. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think she's fifteen. I don't know. <laughs> she look a little bit too old for a twelve year old. But that maybe it's me. I'm not very good at that. But basically, what happened is that one day. Uh, our big protagonist B, she kind of begins to realize that she's beginning to see creature roaming around, she, and and then she realized then uh, basically she started seeing well the if the imagine the imaginary friends, <laughs> um, yeah, the imaginary friends are of course uh, if you see the poster it is uh the, one of the main guys is of course this big. Uh, kind of like a mixture between the grimace and uh, and, and what was, what was the name of the yeti from Teddy Ruxpin? Ruxpin? Well, whatever. This guy named Lou. I'll get to that. <laughs> and yeah, he's poised by Steve Carell. But uh, uh, there's also uh, there's also kind of like this uh, Betty Boop kind of type of butterfly. She, uh, she's voiced by, oh my god, Stevie, Stevie Waller, Stevie Waller Bridge, trying to make amends for her awful debut on, you know, Dial of Destiny, but thankfully she's not the actress, she's voice acting. But of course, uh, by continuing like that, she also meets uh, this guy who is kind of like a Cromogeny. Uh, he's kind of like a Cromagnoni guy who all lives in, uh, in the upstairs apartment of the house, and he's trying to relocate all these imaginary friends to try to bond them with kids. It and of course that's our star, Ryan Reynolds. He 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 he's he very he's kind of like he's kind of like no nonsense, very bitter in, in a way, in kind of like in a way. And well, well, B meets them, and then she finds out that. He, that this guy actually is kind of like working on some kind of retirement home where they're trying, they pick up and try to relocate 
relocate imaginary friends or you know also try to bond with you know with other kids and all this stuff you can tell that this is where the foster for imaginary friends uh, uh inspiration has but from this point on i gotta say that i got a little bit to stop because i it isn't one of those in which I don't want to spoil too much about the movie because honestly, this movie, uh, this movie deserves to be seen at least once, uh, and you'll get some kind of opinion out of it. But I will say that the the acting is pretty good, uh, both from the human actors and the voice and the voice actor as well, kind of like the character. Now, for example, the character of B, uh, she's. It, uh, She's, I will say that she, she comes off as a better character than the girl from, remember that, remember that really, really bad uh, animated movie called Wonder Park? Even I made a two, I remember that I even made a two-parter of that. Imagine if that, it was that character, but written better and, and, and kind of like more humanistic. It's not kind of like a perfect girl. Although sometimes I, uh, there are times that I do question the way she, she sometimes dresses because it's a little bit, although maybe it's just me. I think that they dress her a little bit, how can I say, too night? No, 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 not 90 years ago. It's kind of like a 2000 era or something like that. and uh, or, or too soy. I think it's kind of like too soy. Uh, kind of like soy sauce, I'll say. Uh, but uh, and uh, maybe and may, her her story arc is not exactly how can I say the uh, you will uh, for example someone that comes from the slums or something like that. It's still it, it, it's still understandable enough that she's kind of like a girl that she's com she's com uh, going through a situation that her her loved one one of the is is dying. Uh, it dying, it, it, well, it doesn't say that it's dying, but let's say that it is going through a very risky, uh, risky uh, uh, operation because, well, he had, it, it's technically a heart disease. It doesn't say anything. And it doesn't help that this is how she also lost her mother, in which uh, I, I'm glad that they don't hammer, you know, the, you know, the backstory, you know, of the mother in which Although there are some clues about what happened to her, but the movie at least is clever enough to tell you that, uh, to not tell you. It, it just, uh, you just see the signs and that's, and that's good enough. Uh, good enough. It's not as, you know, as super impactful as Up, uh, but it still, it still got the right cards into it. And of course, you got the father, John Krasinski, who, he's a likable guy, a little, uh, and he tries his best, he, he tries his best, you know, to to uh, to cheer up her daughter by playing a, kind of like his goofy self, even even in the face of of a heart, of a heart disease. Um, uh, there's the grandmother who she doesn't appear much, but the moment that in which she's in, she's she's kind of like uh, she's she's a nice she's a nice woman. Uh, there's some other guys. Um, well, then we got of course Ryan Reynolds who. You know, in ways, the way he acted and all this stuff, I was kind of thinking that he should have been the main character. Uh, uh, mostly because there was something on him in which his, his chromogeny behavior, it was kind of like interesting. It's almost like a guy who, who it, it will, you know, he, he had to work with, uh, with imaginary friends, but he kind of doesn't like it because his heart kind of like, doesn't he doesn't heart he has it into it 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 even comes kind of like a moment in which it kind of reminded me of Eddie Valiant from uh, from how framed Roger Rabbit you know the guy who worked who he has to work with cartoons but he hates cartoons and I was even jokingly in my mind thinking that maybe an imaginary friend killed his brother <laughs> no it doesn't go that way but there is something interesting about it although that interesting part uh, i will leave it like that but it, but honestly that part comes depending on who you are it comes up as, as clever or weak because honestly when you see movies like that uh, you will uh, you kind of predict it and but that's the best i can say that but still ryan reynolds is you know his usual ryan reynolds and and then of course we got well the myth uh, well, what was it? The, imagine, uh, the imaginary friend. Uh, 
the imaginary, uh, the, the imaginary friends, uh, like I said, the, the, there's the grim, there's a big grimace named Blue. Uh, he's named like that, despite that he's purple, because he, the kid that created him, he was colorblind. And honestly, when he he said his name is Blue, I was like, oh my god, a Cartoon Network or Crack McCracken is gonna sue him. Be I mean. I don't know, was it a coincidence? I want to know if it was a coincidence or maybe these people haven't seen Foster Home for Imaginary Friends because the main imaginary friend in that show is also named Blue. Of course that, it is Blue, of course. It also, these two kind of come to kind of like in a, in a different spectrum. I mean, the Blue from Foster Home for Imaginary Friend is kind of like this, this narcissistic, uh, very, uh, how can I say, trouble uh, uh, he becomes kind of like a troublemaker and kind of like a jerk ass sometimes uh although it's some it, this character kind of becomes a lot of fun to watch him suffer in one way or another although the blue from this movie well i'm glad that they don't overstay too much his welcome because during the first moment yeah, he comes up a little bit annoying i'm not gonna lie he comes up and it kind of he becomes kind of like the big dumb guy that uh, you just want to you know put him you know a little bit on time out. But luckily that moment doesn't stay doesn't, doesn't overstay its welcome, and he doesn't even overstay that welcome to the point that then comes to a moment in which he, you you start uh, you start warming up to the guy and becomes a little bit more tolerable. So uh, you you just how can I say? You just kind of, uh, you just warm up uh, with the guy, and 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 I'm glad that they, uh, I'm glad that they managed to sparingly use the character. Of course, the, there is of course the Blossom character, you know, the Phoebe Waller Greer character that, uh, uh, she doesn't also appear too much, I'll say. But the moment in which she does, she does have kind of like a, uh, kind of like a hidden past past that I'm not gonna get into it because the movie tells you. But it is kind of like I will say that it's good. Oh yeah, and also in that retirement home, apparently one of the heads is kind of like this big old bear, you know, with very, very kind of like 60s clothes, 70s clothes. Uh, his name is, I think his name was Louis the Bear. He's played by Louis Gossett Jr. And he's kind of kind of like this mentor fatherly figure that I love, I really also love this guy. This is a guy in which I wish he was real and I would love, you know, to, you know, talk to him and probably have a game of chess. And yeah, there's other imaginary friends that you're going to see over there. Oh, but they're kind of more like secondary, but I love, I gotta say that I love kind of like the design. Uh, something that I remember is kind of like this bubble that pop, uh, that, uh, that every time it pops up. There is kind of like this dog that looks like a superhero that it, I love that design. I, I love that design of that of that superhero dog. Uh, there is this giant gummy bear, uh, this uh, that crocodile. Uh, probably I will say that my favorite is the unicorn. I I I love I really like that unicorn. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, uh, they're kind of lovable. Out that I will say that again, comparing to Foster Home for Imaginary Friends, they're not so over the top. I'll say. Oh uh, uh, yeah, and also as a secondary character, there's also this little kid that uh, that B befriends in the hospital. The kid doesn't appear much. He is m more kind of like a secondary character. Uh, but, they, I, but I get the kind of like the feeling that this kid had a crush on B and he like, hey, or something like that. I, I, I think, you know, little kid stuff and a little kid stuff that he befriends some random girl that he just see and all this stuff. And, and B kind of took, you know, saying that, hey, uh, okay, let me be your friend. And she also gives him, you know, flowers in that part from her father and all this stuff. And so that's, that's technically I'll say. Okay, and now I'm going a little bit with the cinematography in which uh, the cinematography is um, is kind of like standard for some family friendly thing. It's it's well it's well done. It, it's well done. There's I don't think that there's kind of like a moment in which the camera 
in which the camera kind of bothered me or something like that. And I will say that the anim the animated characters, while very cartoonish in, in their designs, uh, they, they did have kind of like a nice blend uh, uh, with the environment. Uh, there was kind of like a, not a, almost not exactly a single moment where I I felt them a little bit out of place. I don't even know if they went a little bit out of place. I can uh, I can you know apologize that well yeah well they're figments from your imagination and and they're roaming and they're roaming around and personally. I like these, uh, you know, looking at these animated characters, you know, walking around being, you know, their goofy self. I like them much better than, you know, having hyper-realistic beings, you know, walking around almost, almost like, well, mm, for lack of it, uh, uh, not to diss out, but almost like Planet of the, uh, the Planet of the Apes. Uh, uh, it's not that bad CGI, but I'm not exactly kind of like the biggest fan of hyper-realism. Uh, all that, uh, and I like also, you know, when they did it to Roger Rabbit, but it, this is something that, uh, but I do agree that sometimes when you use CGI, uh, if it's not well implemented, it can go horribly wrong sometimes. Uh, so, uh, uh, but luckily this one didn't, uh, didn't get too much, you know, with that. And, well, for an hour and a 40, 45, 47 minutes movie, it, it it is have kind of it has kind of like a a nice pace, but here is a little bit where I don't overhype the movie like because like I said the movie also has you know its flaws and one of the one of the flaws that I can find with the movie is that the first thing is that the world of imagination it feels a little bit small and we only have kind of like a very limited set of imaginary friend characters. So, uh, so the ones that uh, the ones that you mentioned, like for example, you know the unicorn, the bubble. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. There, there, also, there is kind of like this uh, this mysterious guy with a cartoon eyes, but he's he dressed up, you know, like uh, like uh, let's say like like a sneaky guy. Uh, but here's the thing: you're they only limited it too much with these kind of characters. I don't know if it's because they they just wanted to keep low budget, but these uh, they were kind of like imaginary and only using the, you know this limited amount of imaginary character. It makes the movie a little bit how could I say? It makes the world of imagination a little bit kind of like smaller. Uh, but for its credit. Um, for for a movie that is about imagination and feeling about the imagination and all that stuff, it does a million times better than imaginary that that Bloomhouse horror movie. And here's the difference: is that the horror movie of imaginary, it the the reason that it feels like it lacks imagination is that it kind of goes how can I say into into the horror movie you know trope and. It it doesn't it doesn't take advantage of you know about the about the imagination that you can do anything or sometimes when they do it 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 feels you know out of play and only because they just wanted to keep it you know like in that in that you know, like that well to, uh, in its in its whole extent and and all, and on, and also they just only uh, they just only stick with the bear and another thing and the spider that. Uh, that's it. A very few and all this stuff. And they just go with one. In the case of this movie, uh, you're dealing with a world. <laughs> a lot of imaginary friends. There's a lot of them. And you know, imagine. Uh, there's a you know, you have a little bit more characters into it. Although I understand that they don't want it to go far away to make it you know like after home for imaginary friends in which, well, to be fair. Those two, both the movie and Foster Home, they are kind of like a different, a different kind of world building. Like for example, in in the show uh, Foster Home for Imaginary Friends, uh, it is kind of like uh, an interesting world where imaginary friends they become real. They are so real that 
they even they are kind of like their own their own society they can walk around and people just seeing them and they just they just look like huh uh, so so basically the imaginary friends are kind of like their own popula their own population which kind of makes the world a, a little bit how can I say wacky it, 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 it because I know it's kind of inspired like Dr. Seuss but in this but in this movie uh, in this movie actually the imaginary friends they just happen to be seen by certain amount of people uh, and and by the way, that's actually part of the theme of this movie because mostly the theme is a, is about you know these imaginary friends that they are basically kind of like a quote unquote abandoned by their own children because well they grew up they grew up and technically they forget about them and it, these it kind of come it makes them you know kind of sad and well. It doesn't technically show you that they have, you know, the fear that they might disappear. Uh, they doesn't go exactly kind of like that way, but it does. It, uh, uh, but it kind of, it kind of showcases that what 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 imaginary friends are, where they kind of explore why they're there, why they're exploring it, and and well, it's not exactly kind of like the movie. I kind of like explore, you know, saying that. Maybe imaginary friends is kind of like, uh, kind of like a repressed emotion or a way because, well, usually people think that there are, uh, there are kind of like coping mechanisms for when you are, you are not very, uh, you are, you are not very social and you lack friends and you make up for you know something kind of like a comfort zone. I know that I I am into that situation, uh, and. But this one is kind of upgrades them by kind of like saying that it's basically kind of like a coping mechanism of you know feeling yourself better to have you know someone someone you know to someone to to make to help out cope with you you your your pro you know kind of like problems and even even I'm glad also that they showcase that even adults in which they they're kind of like lonely in, in you know into the real world eh? and you yeah just have a yeah, imaginary friend is kind of like a coping mechanism of confidence that it will let it that it will let you it will uh, it, it 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 gonna help you out and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're grown up it's just well it's part of life and all this stuff and it and and and, and, it, and it, i like it that it kind of it kind of put a spark, you know, um, you know, on a bright world, and that it's sometimes, you know, dull. Uh, even, even, you know, in the harshest moment, like for a protect, like for a protagonist, that uh, out there, here's a little bit of, you know, also the criticism that I got with the movie is that sometimes, you know, the building of the, the character building of the B of B's arc, it comes up sometimes a little bit rushed or inconsistent sometimes because. Yeah, so, because sometimes she gets in one place to another, you know, out of nowhere, and then she's suddenly happy, and then, then we kind of forget a little bit that she, she's, uh, she has, you know, the problem with the father or something until until the moment comes, uh, and and there and during the half of the movie also comes it comes it gets a little bit confusing. Like for example, where did this come from? Like, it gets a little bit vague. Like for example. How, for example, how the hell, you know, the character, you know, teleport from one place to another to make kind of, you know, just to make the world kind of like, you can go anywhere with your imagination. They kind of begin to break the rules of consistency and pacing. And Alta, Alta, when you find it, if you find it, it, it kind of gets a little bit forgiving, I'll say. And that's pretty much how, that's pretty much how I'll say. And by the way, uh, a little bit of a nitpick I'll say to at least while I was watching the thumbnails of YouTube, one guy kind of says that this movie is very depressing. Honestly, it wasn't. It wasn't very depressing. I know that the, it's kind of uh, it comes kind of like a harsh. Uh, uh, it kind of the they're sad moments. Yeah, it's really sad. And you know what? It it's sad for the right uh, for the right reason. But well, if I charming and wholesome and happy you know, for for what is good. So I will say that, yeah, this movie did play the cards right. 
is it I, this I think this is probably the underdog of this year. <laughs> well, not the movie. I'm just being the tournament. You know what I mean. So overall, mm, I gotta say that this it meant if this is probably the apology letter that I needed from both Ryan Reynolds and Paramount. You have to spirit it and knuckles in which they put me in a bad mood. <laughs> Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna say you know, kind of like a big apology, but you know, movies like that, you, you I, you kind of, I just kind of needed that at least once in a while. I feel, uh, feel good movie that it really tugs on your, on your heartstrings. I did, and it kind of tries its best to show some, you know, uh, how can I say some value on you know the power of imagine of imaginary friends and finding. Yeah, her, their, you know, their, their charm, their importance, uh, it, it has, it has its own, you know, like fun. It, it is, and it doesn't go exactly, you know, on a cynic, on a cynical level, which it could have been easily done, but it does, it, it doesn't. Once in a while, we don't need a, you know, overly cynical movies. I mean, cynical is, is, is not a bad thing, but if I'm honest, but you know, like I said, when you play the cards right, it comes for it comes right. So, honestly, it, it still it makes me even more sad to see the empty movie theater when I went to. So, I do highly recommend. Uh, if if you like it, very very good. If you don't like it, I can understand it. It is it's flaw, but still charming.